a, a little anecdote just popped into my head when I was in college studying jazz piano and playing in a kind of jam band, few jazz fusion band. I went to go see Herbie Hancock when he they released their Return to the Headhunters album and they were playing live. So the trumpet player from the band and I went and I just was so, Herbie is one of my, you know, luminaries. Um, he's so talented and so tasteful and he's been involved in so many amazing projects over the years. So here's, you know, one of my heroes and I remember I somehow weaseled myself backstage <clears throat> and I wanted to meet Herbie and I don't know why anyone let me back there. <laughs> Uh, maybe there was some connection with somebody at the door that knew the band that I was in. We were just a really small little local band, but um, somehow found myself in the green room with Herbie Hancock and I was just frozen. I, was like, <laughs> I don't know what to, what do you say? And he was just sitting there. Just, I don't remember if he was maybe smoking a cigarette or he's had a drink Maybe it was water or just, I, I don't remember anything. I just remember him sitting there and I was just a few feet from him. And I just thought, well, what do I say? And, but I wanted, what I wanted was a, an apprenticeship. You know, I wanted a mentor. And I remember I, I, they were packing up and I had a minute to speak to his tour manager. And I said, you know, can I, I would be willing to do anything to join the tour and just hang with Herbie and learn and, and uh, do whatever he needed to have done. And I don't think the guy had any idea of the band that I was playing in or what I was doing. And he just said, look, man, Herbie has his thing and you've got your thing and you should just follow that. And I was, it, you know, it would have been, I was confused because I thought, well, he doesn't have any idea what my thing is. <laughs> Maybe he would tell me to go to school or get another kind of job <laughs> if he did. But for whatever reason, it was kind of the perfect advice that I got at that time. And it helped me to continue focusing on doing my own thing. You know, I think that we have this idea that the answers are going to come from somewhere else. Um, have you seen the razor's edge that Bill Murray movie? I, I haven't actually, no. Um, I know but I'm sure some people in the audience have so, and, and well, I'd, I'd definitely be interested. Well, I don't want to spoil the ending for you, but the whole point is, is a bit about realizing that you, that the answers are not going to come from something outside of yourself, kind of that there are no answers. Hmm. And you're, we're all just kind of improvising. That's not to say that there aren't a lot of people that have true wisdom. It's not to say there aren't skills that you can develop or real world ways that you can learn. But I, I think that <clears throat> taking control of your own development is, um, that's a really crucial part of, of a person's evolution, I think. Um, so that, that helped me settle in and, and focus more on my own thing. And then fast forward to, uh, years later, I actually got what I wanted in Michael Dana, who was my film composing mentor that I worked with for five years. And he has a degree in composition and is very learned and, uh, was an organ player in his church growing up and, um, he's become a, a really huge influence on me and a very dear friend. And he let me work up the ranks underneath him. And I started assisting, which, you know, buying him computer gear and setting it up and making tea and doing everything that an assistant does. And he gave me musical opportunities that, um, kind of built on the previous and he let me work up. And I remember at one point years in, he said something to me that stuck with me a lot, which is, he said to me, you're not as scared as you should be. 
which at the moment I just, <laughs> it's still, it's still a, it's a very gray comment. It's not black and white. It's not clearly negative. It's not clearly positive because in that is, is courage <laughs> or maybe stupidity. You know, it mm. might be blind, uh, you know, blind, um, you know, courage is like being afraid and doing something anyway. Mm -hmm. And this is more like, maybe I don't know the danger, <laughs> but I'm going ahead anyway, you know, just like swimming with sharks and not even knowing what a shark is. Mm. Um, so I, you know, I think if, if the, the fact that I'm still standing today and still, you know, creating music, on a as, a as a profession is I think a testament to um, being very lucky hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and also just being willing to just jump in and that's not to say that I didn't learn a tremendous amount from Michael that I didn't take from him a lot of you know I would, when you, when you have a mentor, you're kind of under their wing and you get to experience everything that they're going through, but your ass isn't in the hot seat, you know, um, for the, for the job. So you get to see how they handle it and you get to think about how I might handle it, what I might do differently or what I might do the same. And it's an experience that I would, I would wish and hope for anyone who wanted it. And I, I value it greatly. Mm -hmm. And um and michael was always trying to find angles in with his work intellectual angles and that's something that i really picked i took from him as well was trying to find a kind of intellectual frame for how you approach a score it helps you set up rules it helps you to kind of draw a map um and so you know i think these things have have really been kind of i don't know crucial to my development i i don't even remember what your question was and i hope that i answered it in some regard yeah. 